You know, for decades, Saudi Arabia's power flowed through pipelines. We're talking about those thick rivers of oil that have fueled the entire world. But that era, well, it's fading. So today, we're diving deep into the kingdom's absolutely massive bet to switch its power source from black gold to artificial intelligence. Now, this isn't just some catchy phrase. This is the core belief, the philosophy that's driving a complete reinvention of the country. Saudi Arabia is putting a stake in the ground and saying, look, the future of power isn't about what you can dig up, but about what you can create with data and algorithms. Okay, so let's really break this shift down. We are literally watching a move from a world powered by physical stuff that runs out to one driven by the absolutely infinite potential of data. It's a total reimagining of what it even means for a country to be rich and powerful in the 21st century. So that brings us right to our first section, from oil to algorithms. We're gonna look at the why behind this incredible pivot, which is being led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The mission here is crystal clear. This isn't just about finding a few new ways to make money. No, this is a super high stakes gamble. The plan is to take all that incredible oil wealth and pour it into becoming a permanent dominant force in technology. They're betting billions that the next great export from Saudi Arabia won't be fuel, it's gonna be computing power. All right, so how in the world do you actually make this happen? We've talked about the why, so now let's get into the how, the huge real world steps they're taking to build this digital empire from the sand up. At the absolute center of this whole strategy is something called the Public Investment Fund, or PIF. This is the kingdom's nearly trillion dollar piggy bank, and its job is just mind-blowingly ambitious. Use all that cash to make Saudi Arabia a global AI superpower, right up there competing with the US and China. And the crown jewel of this whole ambition, it's a project called Neom. We're talking about a $500 billion futuristic megacity, built completely from scratch to basically be a living laboratory for AI. This is way more than just new buildings. It's a statement. It's blurring the lines between what you see in science fiction and actual national policy. And it's not just about flashy cities. There's a serious focus on raw computing power. A staggering $5 billion is being funneled into a single massive AI data center. Just to give you a sense of the scale here, this one facility is being designed to serve researchers not just in the region, but all the way over in Europe. The sheer scale of what they're building is just immense. The goal is to have six gigawatts of data capacity by 2034. To put that in perspective, that's enough juice to run millions of high-performance computers all at the same time. It's truly like discovering a vast, brand new oil reserve, only this time, it's digital. And you know what? They're not trying to do this alone. They're partnering with the biggest names in the game. NVIDIA for the chips, AWS for the cloud, Blackstone for investment. This sends a signal to the whole world that this isn't some pipe dream. It's a serious, globally backed mission. These partnerships bring in not just money, but absolutely crucial expertise and credibility. Okay, so this huge transformation isn't happening in a bubble, not at all. It's actually part of a really intense, high stakes global race for tech supremacy. This creates a really fascinating new situation. You've got this region that was, for so long, unified by oil and OPEC, and now it's breaking into this fierce competition. Old allies are suddenly direct rivals in what you could really call a new AI arms race. And you can see this rivalry playing out in real time. Right next door, the UAE is making its own massive moves with its AI company G42 and its huge Stargate project. It's a super clear sign that the race for AI dominance isn't just global, it's a seriously intense regional fight. But for all the trillions of dollars being poured into these incredible projects, there's one critical problem. One thing that money alone, no matter how much of it you have, just can't easily buy. And that is access to the world's most advanced AI chips, which are mostly made by American companies like NVIDIA. The US government keeps a really tight leash on who gets to buy these things. This forces Saudi Arabia to walk this very delicate geopolitical tightrope, trying to balance its relationship with the US while also building ties with China. Because if the chips stop flowing, this entire dream could grind to a halt. Meanwhile, other big players on the world stage are taking a completely different path. Take India, for example. They're focusing less on building giant physical things and more on developing people. Their whole strategy is about creating a massive pool of AI talent and a buzzing startup scene. 
It's a fascinating contrast, really. Hardware versus humanware. So where is all of this headed? In our final section, let's zoom out and think about the potential global impact if Saudi Arabia's enormous bet actually pays off. The economic numbers here are just staggering. The Saudi AI market is worth almost $7 billion today, but it's projected to grow at what they call a compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, of over 43%. What that means is by 2030, the market could be worth nearly $60 billion. That's a huge new revenue stream for the country. So with all the challenges we talked about, why are the world's biggest tech companies still so eager to get involved? Well, the kingdom offers this unique mix of advantages that are hard to resist. Cheap energy, way less red tape, and most importantly, what feels like a bottomless pit of cash for investment. In the super expensive world of AI, that is a powerful, powerful magnet. This quote really just says it all, doesn't it? It perfectly captures the historic shift we've been talking about. It's a move away from a physical resource you pull out of the ground to a digital one that can be everywhere at once. And that leaves us with this final question. There's no doubt the kingdom is turning its oil fields into data fields, but the ultimate test, the real trillion dollar question is still out there. Can all of this incredible wealth actually be transformed into wisdom? And in this new age of AI, can a nation built on energy really become the new engine of our digital world?